Okay, I've just spent about one hour, I mean, basically exactly one hour. We leave at 7.30 a.m. to take my kid to school and it's 8.32 a.m. and we just got back, moderate rainfall. Let's see how G1000 does in moderate rainfall. So it's like 37, 38 degrees Fahrenheit right now. And uh, yeah, moderate rainfall. So I have waxed the hood. I've waxed the shoulders and I've waxed the top flap of the top pockets and you and, and the storm flap too. So you should be able to see that there's water beaded up on the shoulders, the hood and the storm flap. And uh, if you look at the arms, they're completely soaked. If you look at the front, they're completely soaked. So before I take this off and we see what I look like under it, let's go ahead and get a look at what the inside of these pockets look like. So water definitely soaked through. Remember this is unwaxed, this is waxed. So it looks like the upper part is completely dry underneath. Now this is also two layers of G1000 on this flap and I waxed both sides of it and there's absolutely no moisture on this side. So no water penetrated through the two layers of waxed fabric on the flap but water did penetrate through the single layer on the front of the pocket into the layer behind it. On both sides, there's more coming through this one than there is this one, but that probably just has to do more or less with the way the rain is falling. And if you notice these, these pockets here have points and that's because water comes down the front and then it collects these points and drips off. That's usually why they do that. So, all right, let's unzip it here. Same thing with the storm flap. The storm flap is two layers of G1000. I waxed it on the front and the back side, and it is completely dry uh, underneath the storm flap, no water penetration whatsoever. Okay, so I'm wearing a wool shirt underneath it. Look at that. You can see I have no water penetrating over here, but I do have water penetrating over here. All right. And look on the inside here, you can see water penetrated here. All of this is wet. Oh yeah, look at that. I have this one right here. So that's gonna help keep water off your chest here because it's got an extra two layers of G1000. The shoulders feel dry, but we'll see when we pull it off. So water all the way through here. So it looks like the further down you go, the less water is getting in. So it's probably more critical to wax the arms and the, and the uh, upper parts of your body, like the hood and, and the shoulders, uh, to prevent water from getting through, which is kind of common sense, right? But, uh, you know, it's good to see real world results. So I'm wearing a wool cap. Uh, my wool cap has no signs of moisture whatsoever on the parts that were protected by the hood. <clears throat> Okay, so I got water all the way through my arm here. It, surprisingly, it's not terrible. And that's actually a pretty, you know, manageable amount of water that came through, but the wool is definitely soaked in these spots that you see. So if you want better waterproofing, or if I want better waterproofing, I'm gonna need to wax the arms for sure. That might be where I stop though. Uh, yeah, so if you look at here, you can you can easily, I mean, I can feel, this is just a single layer of G1000, it's not double layered, and uh, it's completely soaked. Now the, the benefit to G1000 is that it's gonna dry out real fast. Now I, oh yes, I also waxed the elbows here, but you can see there's almost no moisture on the elbows. And this is two layers, but I only waxed the outer layer. And the reason I did that is because waxing adds a little durability in addition to weatherproofing. So if you're gonna use your elbows and you're gonna be rubbing on things or whatever, abrasion resistance is added by the wax. So that's why I wanted that on the elbows, but I think I'll probably do the entire arm. I would expect the arm is not gonna perform as well as a lot of other parts that I've already waxed because a lot of the parts that I've waxed are in fact double layered. So the front of the shoulders here is double layered. Okay, and uh, 
I don't know if I actually, yeah, I physically waxed both layers at the front of the shoulder and it looks like the front of the shoulder has absolutely zero water penetration. It, you're gonna see like, it looks like it's wet right here, but that's just wax spillage from when I uh, waxed the inside. So that's, that's actually wax. That's water, that's wax, this is water. Um, and then in the back here, you'll see we're vented, right? So we have this screen and it looks like there is a little bit of water penetration through the back. So the back of the upper back, back of the shoulders, this is one layer of G1000, not two. And it looks like I have like very minor water penetration through this waxed single layer. And then on the hood, you see water's beaded up on the hood very well. Now the hood is double layered, I think. No, it's actually single layered. Yeah, the, the hood is just single layered. Uh, double layered around the front here with the pull cords, but this is all single. And same thing, I can, there's a little bit of water penetration through the single layer of wax fabric here, but it's really not bad. You know, in heavy rainfall, you could expect more, but moderate rainfall for one hour, not bad. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy with that. I think that's great. I also wax the collar, but the collar, uh, if it's up, the stand, it's a standing collar. It's not really going to fold down like this one. It'll be up like this. Doesn't really get that much water on it in the first place, but I, it's also two layers, but I only wax the outer layer because um, unwaxed G1000 is just more comfortable against your skin. So I left the inside unwaxed so that it would just be more comfortable when I zip it all the way up. But yeah, I mean, you could see right there very clearly water penetration, water penetration, water penetration, and the overwhelming majority of that is coming from the unwaxed single layered sections of G1000. That's exactly what I would expect. This is an older jacket. If it originally came from Fjall Raven with some level of wax on it, I'm sure it's long, long gone. Uh, I waxed these parts that I've shown you with Martexan wax. That is not Fjall Raven, it's Martexan. And so uh, that's my preferred wax. It's fairly easy to apply. And I've probably put a lot more wax on this than you, you know, your typical user would with the Fjall Raven because the Fjall Raven comes in like a little brick and you kind of rub it on there. And that just isn't a very efficient way to get wax into the fabric. What it is though, is a great way to control the amount of wax that you get in the fabric. I wanted to saturate the fabric with wax. I did not want to, you know, partially saturate it or just get a little bit in there and add a little, like I wanted it as much wax in this fabric as I could get. And the Martexan is just better for that purpose. So I'll be using the Martexan on the sleeves and probably on the chest to the bottom of the front pocket. So this will all get waxed to like this point. Um, I may consider doing the inner zipper flap. I don't, it's probably not necessary. I have a hard time thinking that's necessary because the storm flap did such an effective job. And I might, I might consider doing like a little bit of the upper back, but Again, I'm not really confident that's necessary, but I'm only doing this video because I want you to see real world how this stuff is working out. And you know, a lot of you out there that are experienced with this stuff have done this yourself, so you don't need to watch my video. But if you're somebody who is looking, you know, you're, you're new to this or you've never done this before, I'm trying to show you a real world result. This is not a scientific experiment. It's not controlled in a lab. I went out for a walk for one hour with very little tree coverage in moderate rainfall for Seattle. And this is what I got. So make whatever use you can of that uh, information and do with it what you will. So I, I would say though, that this is pretty much exactly how I expected it to go. And I'm very happy with the result. You know, even after waxing one third roughly of this jacket, I'm very happy with the weight uh, very happy with the performance and the only reason I don't think I want to wax the entire jacket is because the increased breathability of unwaxed G1000 is attractive to me. I don't necessarily want this thing to become 
completely unbreathable or like overly limited. So having rain resistance in the areas that get the most rain is important, but I'd like some room in the body for, uh, for, for better venting because one of the things I use this for is riding a bicycle. So I do uh, aerobic exercise where I sweat a lot uh, with this jacket and um, that level of performance is great. You know, it's, it's entirely possible that my use case may change or that my desires may change. And then from that point on, you know, if I wax the whole jacket, I wax the whole jacket. But yeah, so that is pretty good. Now I'm also wearing G1000 pants. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but there is no appreciable water build up anywhere on the G1000 pants from being out in the rain for an hour. I don't at present see myself waxing any of my G1000 pants um, for severe outdoor use in very wet weather. Probably a good idea, you know, if that's what you're going to use. But for me, the light weight of them, the ability to just throw them in a washing machine and how quickly they will dry out if wet is more valuable than preventing water from soaking into them. And in typical rainfall, I just, in my use case, I just don't get a lot of water on my pants necessarily. And this jacket seemed to do a pretty good job of diverting the water away from my pants. Cause you can see my thighs are not wet. And, um, you know, hopefully you can see that on the camera. I set it up a little higher than normal, so maybe you can't, but yeah. So anyway, and then I'll show you the back. I don't know what the back looks like, but maybe you can see water build up on my shoulders or back that I can't. And then just to let you know what I'm wearing under this to stay warm. So 37, 38 degrees Fahrenheit, moderate rainfall. I've got this Filson um, forestry cloth cruiser, okay, underneath that. I have an icebreaker 50-50 merino wool and cotton blend t-shirt. And under that, I have a wool power 200 gram uh, insulating t-shirt. I'm perfectly comfortable uh, outside. Now, if I was standing still for a really long time or if I got real wet, you know, maybe I'd get a little colder, but uh, underneath this jacket, that was perfectly adequate. Obviously, I got gloves, I've got my wool hat, and then I have G1000 pants and merino wool boxer shorts. No long johns or anything like that. Uh, totally comfortable that way. And, uh, you know, how much heat you like is entirely independent. I know people that would dress way less than this and be perfectly comfortable, and I know people who would be dying from the cold if they weren't wearing three times the amount of insulating layers that I am currently. So there's no way for me to predict what your preferences are going to be. I'm just telling you what I'm wearing. You can use that as a baseline and go from there. Thank you for watching and uh, more information as I get out and test things and beat them up and we'll see how it goes. All right.